Hello YouTube, welcome to the Vegan Bread Machine channel. Today we're going to start with a recipe that actually made me stop using my bread maker a few years ago. It is called Coconut Milk White Bread, and it comes from the Bread Lover's Bread Machine cookbook by Beth Hensberger. Beth Hensberger is a master baker, wrote 10 books on bread baking, won a James Beard Book Award, and twice nominated for the Julia Child Cookbook Award. She also has a column called Baking with the Seasons at the San Jose Mercury News. How do I know all this? It says so right here. Coconut milk white bread is a simple ingredient bread. Most cooks will have the ingredients on hand, and well, maybe not coconut milk, but that can be had quite cheaply at the grocery store. Uh, and it's vegan out of the gate. So, sounds easy? Not really. I'll tell you in a minute. So I'm making a two pound loaf but if you want to make a one and a half pound loaf, it is on screen. Just pause the video. If you want to do a one pound loaf, just look at the two pound ingredient list and divide it by half. Okay, here we go. You will need the following. One and a half cups of canned coconut milk, basically almost one can, four cups bread flour, one tablespoon and one teaspoon of gluten, two teaspoons of salt, two and a half teaspoons of SAF yeast. Here's a tip. Use leveled off measurements, not rounded scoops. Don't pack the flour. Make, all, make sure all the ingredients are at room temperature. The more accurate one is, the better the loaf. First step, take the pan out of the machine. T trust me, it's a P-I-T-A to thoroughly clean the machine out if you get sloppy. Second step, desolidify the can of coconut milk. If you are whisking by hand, you will be here for at least an hour. Use a hand mixer or any kitchen gadget that will do it faster. Get it as liquidy as possible. Okay, this looks good enough, but let's not get silly here. Third step, pour the liquid ingredients into the pan first. This will be the one and a half cups of coconut milk. I have tested this recipe before creating this video, so I'm putting about one and two thirds cup of milk in. Fourth step, pour the bread flour in and then the gluten. Fifth step, Put the salt in, but off to the side. After testing the recipe before, I'm putting one teaspoon in. It should be noted that I used kosher salt, which isn't ideal. J you should really just use table salt. Trust me on this one. Sixth step. Dig a small hole in the center of the mound with your finger or a spoon, and then clear cleanly pour the yeast into the hole. Seventh step. Put the pan in the machine, fully seated, close the lid, and select basic regular course, medium crust, and then press start. The bread machine I am using is a Zojirushi Home Bakery Virtuoso model BB-PAC20. At $300, this is one expensive machine. However, this is the Cadillac of bread machines. If you have the means, I highly suggest picking one up. But no, seriously, the one notable thing this machine has is a gluten-free course. That's it. There are cheaper machines that work just as well, and maybe one day I'll get one to play with, but right now I'm just borrowing this from my mother. Hey, she ain't using it. What I'm going to tell you next is critical. When you press start, the machine lets everything sit for 31 minutes. Then it starts the knead cycle. Now in the middle of the knead cycle, 45 minutes since pressing the start button, it will make a beeping sound. At this point, check the dough. Always get into the habit of checking the dough. If the dough doesn't look right, it will not fix itself. Don't chance it. If it's a nice, damp, smooth ball, it's fine. If it feels a little dry, I add a tablespoon or two of water. If it's clumpy, it might be salvageable by hand. If it's gnarly or hideous, throw it out and start again. In my case, the dough looks lumpy, but damp. I added in 50 milliliters, or a fifth of a cup of water in, some of which is on top and then the rest in the pan. I thought this would straighten out the lumps, but uh, in retrospect, I think an extra knead cycle would have fixed this better. Once you are satisfied with the dough, close the lid. You are free to do whatever you want. The machine cannot burn your loaf like an oven can, if you're inattentive. Though, if you leave it alone too long after the keep warm phase, you meaning the very end, it will get soggy, and it has happened to me many times. And there you have it, one loaf of coconut milk white bread. 
Mine ended up lopsided, but it, it's quite good. I bet I can do better in the future, but I want to try other recipes before I try again. My first horrible attempt, I used coconut cream instead of milk, and it was a gnarly mess. At the time, I was on a hot failure streak, so when that happened, I just stopped using the machine for a few years. Looking back at it now, I realized I was a complete dummy. My second attempt was okay. I had a can of coconut milk, but that was lumpy, and I just ran with it. Uh, it created a neat artisanal effect on top of the crust, but it tasted kind of salty. Hence the need of the, you know... To totally liquefy the milk. This attempt as you see it right now is the best attempt yet and I'm proud of it. I think this would make a great Easter brunch bread when you're the only vegan at the table and everyone else is cramming bacon into their food slots. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.